Now ready to go. Welcome tonight to our midweek Bible study and prayer time. Glad to have all of you here in the auditorium, as well as many of you that are listening to us online. We thank you very much for doing that. And Randy's going to help me out because we're going to give you the prayer request. Then we're going to pray. And after that, then we're going to take our praises, which we've got quite a few tonight. So we want to take advantage of that. So let's start off with Randy giving us the prayer request. Where did Randy go? He's up okay, here. I'm right here. Okay. I'm here at this mic. Get it on, buddy. Okay. Prayer request tonight. Please remember uh, Jean Sisk. Uh, Jean's not doing well at all. She's at home uh, in comfort care. And uh, uh, one of her sons was there last night. Her other son was on vacation down in the Caribbean, and he's trying to get back here, get his flights lined up so he can get back here and see his mom. But she had, uh, she had kind of a sudden spell come up on her yesterday evening and put her down in the bed. So uh, please remember her and remember her husband, Frank. Frank's got a great concern for Jean at this time. And, then Thelma, Thelma Robson. Talked to Thelma yesterday. Uh, no, I talked to her this morning. I get my days mixed up. Uh, she, she didn't get in here with us on Sunday morning because her, uh, the dizzy spells have come back on her. She had one Sunday morning. So uh, the vertigo medicines were not helping. So uh, she's waiting to get back in to see her doctor. And I think they're going to restructure some of the medications that she's taking. Uh, she was doing pretty good this morning, but all of a sudden, I think uh, her uh, balance can get get off real quick. So, and uh, and brother Dave Group, we want to remember him. Dave's got an issue with his back, and he's he's got great discomforts, and uh, he's been in this before, and he usually gets through it. So we want to pray him through it this Amen. time. So Amen. Let's let's remember him. So they're the, they're the prayer request. That's, that's what I have Alrighty. right here. All right, so if we could, let's join Randy in prayer. Randy, if you'll pray, we'll be praying with you, okay? Okay, all right, let's pray. Father, we come to you just lifting up Gene tonight, Lord. Uh, just pray you into that household uh, to be with them at this time. Comfort the family as they come in, the boys as they come in to be with their mom. Uh, just strengthen them as they go through this time. And I know it's hard on each one of them, Lord, but with your help, with your love, it makes everything so much easier. So remember Frank, we just lift him up, Lord. And uh, he, he's, the, he's an excellent helpmate, therefore. And just uh, continue to comfort him at this time. Also, Sister Thelma Robson and this, uh, uh, this dizziness that she's had, uh, some form of vertigo, we pray for her that the doctors will get this straight and she can get herself established and uh, back on level ground again. Take all of that away from her. And then remember Dave, Brother Dave, uh, this back issue. Uh, the, we just pray for yes. comfort for him, get that straightened out. Yes. We know that you can get healing to him, and that's what we pray, Lord, that he be healed of this pain and discomfort that he's going through. Thank you for all you do. There's so many prayers, requests we could put on you, God, but uh, I just can't think of all of them right now. But you know the others that's out there. And I lift each one of them up in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, that's a, a good bit of praying we got to do tonight, so keep on praying. Pray during the day, evening, nighttime. You wake up in the middle of the night, say a prayer for those that we mentioned tonight, especially those that... I have to find some difficult situations they're in. Now, why do we pray? Because God answers our prayers. Yes. And because he answers our prayers, we take a portion of our prayer time on Wednesday night to do one thing, and that is to list the prayers. Now, Randy's got several, he said, so God's blessing us in several ways. So go ahead and list them. Okay. Anyway. Yes, uh, little Dakota, I brought him here to y'all two weeks ago, uh, been more than two weeks ago now. Uh, he actually drowned in a pool, and uh, he was uh, taken out of the pool, and the family worked with him and was able to get him back to breathing, but he wasn't conscious, and he was taken to UVA Hospital, and at UVA, uh, they worked with him up there, and just this week, uh, he was released from UVA Hospital and sent back home to his mom and dad. So he's back with his Amen. family. Amen. 
So that was a, that was a tremendous miracle done there with little Dakota. And then our brother Jonah Leonard, uh, he's still in pain. And he's going to the doctor again tomorrow. There'll be a procedure tomorrow for what he's been going through with kidney stones. And they've removed the stones. Amen. But there's a, one more procedure that they'll do tomorrow. And hopefully when they get that procedure done, it's going to relieve a lot of the discomfort that he's Good. been going through. So, Good. But uh, he is just a little bit better. And, but tomorrow should be a whole lot better. And don't sing on Christ the solid rock we stand. That's right. Uh, yes. Okay. <laughs> Amen. Well, I love the part of prayer time we do with, with the blessings. Quite frequently, you'll notice I, uh, I like to pray a lot at the end of that. And tonight, I'm going to lead us in prayer uh, because I enjoy telling the Lord about it. So as you would join me, if I could, please, Alan, I'm going to ask you to run upstairs. This thing is making a ringing noise um, Dave, do, can you tell him exactly what need a little more bass or something? What is it? Huh? It's coming out of the speaker? Well, don't take that away. Yeah. I'm hearing, I hear myself. Uh huh. I have to hear myself. Are you all set? That sounds a little bit better. I don't know what you did. If you didn't do anything, just stay up there. No, I'm joking. All right, sounds good. Let's pray. We enter into your presence tonight with thanksgiving and joy because you have allowed us to be joyful because you've answered our prayer. Lord, when I think about that little boy drowning, I think about how much we read in the Word of God where you came to people that had no answers, and yet you gave the answer when you healed and blessed them. And in every case, you told them, go, because of their faith. In faith, we prayed for people like we are now about people that are, are ill. We're praying for people that's facing situations in their lives that, that's a little more difficult than words can explain. But Lord, we rejoice in knowing that you and you alone are responsible for every single good and wonderful thing that comes from above. And for that reason, we praise your name for the answered prayer. I thank you for my wife Linda's getting over her illness and being able back to live with us last Sunday playing. I thank you for the, the people that have been sick here that are back. And I pray, Lord, as we have already, for those that are still hurting, answer our prayer, Lord. Heal in Jesus' name that we can be able to come together next Wednesday night and we can give praise and honor to you. And we do all this in Jesus' name. And all of God's people said... Amen. Randy, will you get okay. the group up here real Dave, quickly? Yeah, I got. Uh, we got Dave singing Dave with Hannah Randy. Yeah, now Dave is a Methodist on Sundays and a Baptist on Wednesday. Yes. Okay, that's right. <laughs> so, I might add, God's not a Methodist or a Baptist, is he? <laughs> <laughs> that's right. We'll straighten you out. Don't worry about it, brother. Like children of God. I think. Uh, Mel's watching us tonight, and if he is, he was supposed to be here tonight. He was supposed to help me with the song here tonight. So, Mel, we're missing you here. This here I found in an old uh, uh, music book at the house I had, and it's the title y'all have all probably heard. It's called How Beautiful Heaven Must Be. And uh, so we're going to do a couple verses of that. We read of a place that's called heaven.
came all the way down, but I need you to turn these lights on if you don't mind. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank you, Dave. I'll run you to death tonight running them down them steps. It's all right. I tell you what, Alan is a special blessing to me. He always takes care of me from the very get-go. The very first Sunday I was here, he took care of me, and he's been doing it ever since, and uh, make sure my mic works. And uh, Pardon? I'm she not sorry, said I you, had, you haven't been the same since. <laughs> no, and I, he does. He makes sure everything's ready for us. Well, uh, tonight, as I told you, our lesson series I've entitled, Think About It. And tonight, I want you to consider something. I want you to consider what it means when we make the statement, having a fresh start. And tonight, we're going to look at some things in regards to that. Do you ever, ever wonder if you could just have a do-over? I don't know about you, but I, I've, I've done some pretty stupid things. Thank you for not amening that. But uh, I, I've done some pretty stupid things. I remember when I first, Dave, you'll love this, I, I first uh, learned how to use a computer. I was a pastor and I was writing sermons. And so I'd write my sermon a little bit on Monday, and I'd write a little bit on Tuesday, all the way through till Friday. Then Friday... I'd sit back and look at what I'd done and push the button and there would be, ready to print. Except sometimes I would get in a position where when I hit the button, it wasn't the button I wanted to hit. And I had deleted an entire sermon an entire week. Yep. That's when you want to go to the bathroom, look in the mirror and say, stupid. Anyways, um, I don't know if you remember, but several years ago, Staples Office Supply had an ad on t television that they ran a lot, and they talked about pushing the easy button. How many of you remember seeing that commercial on TV? Uh, it pushed the easy button. Well, you know, I bet you would like to have, if you could, to have a, a easy do-over button that you could push. Um, and, and, and being able to say, you know, I messed up here and I shouldn't have done it here, so I will push this button and it'll cause me to, to do it. Can you imagine what it would be like to be able to undo all the mistakes that you make and all the errors you make uh, and, and, and do it seriously, not fooling around, joking. I mean, being honest with yourself and with God that this should have never happened. I mean, mess up with uh, a project that you're doing uh, I, I don't work very good with my hands, so if I do a project, I usually got to have someone else doing it, me help and hold. That's my key phrase, help and hold. Uh, help and then I hold something with them, do the nail and the cut. Uh, and, uh, and, and projects, sometimes we mess up with relationships. Uh, we say something to somebody that we really didn't intend for it to come out that way, and we're a little ashamed of the fact, and didn't want to go back and apologize, because in apologizing, you kind of make you look like you're Really bad. But the truth of the matter is, we like to have it a button to push to undo, wouldn't you, huh? On that one? How about uh, not only relationships, but how about starting and doing things with good intentions that turn out totally wrong? I mean, you really had good intentions, but it was taken wrong and done wrong. Now, I don't know about you, but I'd, <laughs> I'd wear that rascal out and that, that button for sure. You see, we know there's no such thing as is redo, undo. We can't do it. And, and once we come to a realization that we're talking about real life incidents with the book of Haggai, we got to understand uh, that it's important that we understand God is all powerful and God can do anything. Now, when I say that, God's not going to undo. Here's what God does. God takes the things that we mess up. The things that we wish we did have a button we could push and get it to re get back. We don't. But what God does, God takes those miserable mistakes we make, and because of our faithfulness of loving Him, according to Romans 8, 28, making Him the center of our life, you know what God does? He works all things out. And it what seemed to be absolutely disastrous, Almighty God takes it and turns it around. I... I can think of many things in my life as a, as a pastor that, you know, I said the wrong thing or did the wrong thing or, or maybe intentionally uh, and unintentionally, whatever. But the truth of the matter is God will not change the past. But what God will do, 
He will make the past benefit us in such a way that we will understand that Almighty God is in control and not us. I love the Word of God because it explains that to me, and he will not. Haggai chapter 2 and verse 10, it talked about something, talked about the dating, and that's important because we can pinpoint the dating of the rebuilding of the temple with Haggai. But the last phrase of uh, of Haggai chapter uh, uh, 2, verse number 10, I mean, uh, verse, uh, yeah, number 2, I'm sorry. Chapter 1, verse number 2. I'll get it straight in a minute. He talks about something very important, and he leaves this phrase. And the Lord came by me, Haggai, the prophet. What Haggai had as his ministry, listen to me now, that we've been studying for the last few weeks, what we've got to understand, it's not just a group getting together. This is not a Baptist church. This is the nation of Israel and they're talking about doing the temple. You remember the story. He came in red hot on fire for God to do the temple. And then and doing the temple, what happened was it got to be a pretty big project. And as a result of that, they began to look at themselves and say, we've got to have some decent clothes. We've got to have some more. We've got to have some in our garden. We've got to kind of take care of our garden. We've got to be busy with that. And the truth of the matter is, is that they lost their vision. And we've studied this, so I don't have to repeat it. We've learned that that was a bad thing because it took two prophets, Haggai and Zechariah, commissioned by Almighty God to go to, the, go to that nation, preach to them, proclaim, declare to them they need to get back to work building of the, of the temple. Well, Tonight we're going to kind of see a side view of this and be able to get a real interesting thing. We're going to see Haggai says to them, the more that they were doing, the more they saw the blessings of God. He says, don't quit, last week we learned. Don't quit. Don't give up. It's a big task. There's a lot of situations. You can't go back and change the past. What you can do is you can come off of the past with a fresh and new beginning. Why? We serve a God that gives us that opportunity. I don't know about you, but I'm thankful for that. I'm thankful the many times that I have fallen into sin and felt like I didn't belong in the pulpit of God and felt deep in my heart I should have done something else and not be a pastor. And I didn't quit. I kept on. And as I kept on, I counted the many blessings as the song says. Name them one by one. Count your many blessings. See what God has done. Not you. See what God has done. And I'm going to tell you, folks, I could stand here tonight and testify throughout the entire service and the end in prayer at 8 o'clock saying, all I did tonight was just tell you what God and how God has been good to me. I remember the first opportunity I had to tell God I would serve him instead of doing anything. All I wanted to do all my life is coach football. That's all. I loved sports. Still do, by the way. I wanted to, I wanted to coach football. And I remember that when I graduated from college, I had a job offered to me to be a youth pastor. And, uh, and I thought that would be neat to be a youth pastor. But I wasn't involved with anybody playing football. But I had another letter that came to me, clear from California of all places, and it asked me to send them a resume, and within two days I got a letter back, and they said, you're what we're looking for as our, as our football coach, and we would wonder if you'd consider us. I took about 30 seconds and said yes. And I've never been so miserable in my life as I began to think about it. You know what I've done? I've taken God's focus and shoved it aside for my focus. I want to take, I want to push God, me, using me to work with teenagers, I want to take them and push it aside so that I can move my coaching. I can work with young people with coaching, can I? Can I do that? Well, if you're designing it, you sure can. But you see, God didn't want me designing because he knew how stupid I was. 
And God laid on my heart. I remember I went to a chapel service at college, my senior year in college. And we had a guest preacher, and he stood up in that pulpit, and I'll never forget, he looked out there, and it seemed like to me it wasn't a soul in that room but me and him. And he took his finger and pointed right at me, and he said, God has a place for you. Make sure you're in God's place, not your place. All of a sudden, I began to say, God's place is a youth director. My place is a football coach. Now, the Bible tells us in the book of James that every good and perfect thing comes from above. Let me finish that testimony because I always said if I ever gave that testimony, I was always going to give the second part of it. Here it is right here. I worked not in youth work in California. I worked at Thomas Road Baptist Church down in Lynchburg, Virginia. And uh, I got interviewed by Jerry Prevo, who currently now is the president of Liberty University, but he was the pastor of Anchorage Baptist Temple, Anchorage, Alaska. And someone had told him about me, and he called me on the phone. He said, this is Jerry Prevo, Anchorage, Alaska. He said, I understand you want to be a youth pastor. And I said, yes, sir, I do. He said, would you consider coming to Alaska? Do what? Come to Alaska. Man, I didn't think I'd move away from my home, Furtisburg to Lynchburg. That was, my, that was too far for me. And you want to come to Alaska? How far is it? 5,000 miles? Is that all? 5,000 miles. He said, can I come down there tomorrow and interview you? I said, from Anchorage, Alaska? From 5,000 miles? You coming all the way down here to see me? You don't know. I ain't much to look at. Thank you for that amen and that Randy. But I did, I, I, he came down, and I, well, I remember that, that Monday night I went to the airport to pick him up. They only had, uh, the airport, small airport back then, Lynchburg Airport. And I went there to wait on him, and I said, what in the world am I going to do? i never seen this man. People unload that plane, I, I am going to stand there and say, Jerry Prevo, Jerry Prevo. I, I, I can't believe it. Well, that night there was only two people on the plane. One was John Cartwright, who, I, who, I, who I was going to school with down there in Liberty. And uh, he, he and I were good friends. I knew who he was. And the last person to walk off the plane was Jerry Prevo. I said, are you Jerry Prevo? He says, are you calling them? I said, you got me. Now listen to what I'm about to tell you. I did take the job in Anchorage, Alaska, because God led me there. I went there to be the youth pastor. A year after I was there... I was asked by the pastor what I consider coaching football in the Christian school. Now, I, I took that very calmly. And I said, well, just, just let me think about it and pray about it. And then I said, yeah, all right. Come on. I'm ready. And uh, I coached football up there for four years. And I came down here and coached football, coaching 14 years straight, high school and college football. You see, what God tells you and I is you want a fresh start? You got to understand how to get a fresh start. You got to understand how to handle it. So they started rebuilding the temple. Remember now, they quit for 16 years. They never lifted a two by four or an eight penny nail. They didn't do anything. Well, through the preaching of God's word through Haggai and Zechariah, they had a mind to do a job, and so they began to work on it. And about uh, three months into the project, they said, you know what, we got some problems. What are they? Well, first of all, the people are older. Yeah, they're Randy's age. And, and, and they, they don't get along too good. That's June's age, Okay. You want me to keep going? I'll get everybody in the auditorium here. <laughs> Anyways, the trouble was they had a problem. You want to know what it was? You see, they were doing work outside, but they didn't do any work on the inside. And that's how we foul up with God giving us a fresh start. Because a fresh start to us means a do-over. No, 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 no. Don't ever call a fresh start a do-over. It is not. God doesn't do do-overs. God does fresh, new 
creations. Let me illustrate that. Remember when David sinned and Psalm 51 records his uh, confession of sin? Do you remember in there when he says, create in me a new heart? Here's what David said. My heart is bad. And it wasn't from a cardiologist either. He said, uh, my heart is bad, and it ain't because I'm taking medicine either. The reason my heart is bad is because I need you to remove that old heart and give me a new heart, brand new heart. The word for create there is the word bara in Hebrew. Bara in Hebrew means from absolutely nothing is created. Chapter 1 of Genesis, verse number 2. In the beginning, God created. Brand new. Okay? So, we see this taking place. You see, they were absolutely wanting to do the work, but the problem was their heart was in the wrong place. And because their heart was in the wrong place, their desires were in the wrong place. And because their desires were in the wrong place, three months into the project, they began to find fault with it. Find fault with what God's called you to do? Yeah, they, they, they had trouble. The temple had a lot of problems. It had a lot of criticism. But Haggai did not let up. He continued to preach. He, be, he continued to do what God told him to do. And he said, don't quit. Don't stop doing what you're doing. Verse number uh, 18. The Bible tells us, consider now from, here's what he said, the days uh, and tomorrow. He says, take a good look. So let's do that tonight. In other words, the Lord says, I don't really care that you are where you're at at this point. I know where I can take you from this point. So therefore, I need you willing to step forward. Man, I love that. I love that. I believe I could preach that on like a month and not let up. How we always want to rewrite what God's told us to do because we can't make it fit. We come along and we sit down and we say, well, I guess I got to get into my blessed assurance stage. That means I do nothing. I'm waiting for the Lord to tell me what to do. You better just go and do what God told you to do, stupid, and not try to rewrite it. We try to redo what God tells us to do. Why? Because we don't want to do it. We don't want to do it. We find every reason why we cannot do what God's called us to do. Now, let me tell you whose plan that is. It's not God's. It's the devil. Because if the devil can slow down your momentum, he can slow down everybody that's on the committee that you're on, everybody that's in a ministry that you're in. It'll cause your family to be affected. Why? Because that disease called what? Quitting. That's it. And tonight, we got an opportunity, according to the title of that outline I'm giving you from the book of Haggai, it's very simple. It's about a refreshing new start. Not starting all over. Starting right where you are, and understanding I'm in this position because God allowed me to be there. You see, along comes uh, Haggai, and he says, it's really important you understand that we've got to deal with a problem that's inside your body. What is that? It's unclean. Okay, now we're going to shift gears. We've got three things we've got to look at tonight. Number one, a fresh start requires a fresh look at where we are. Where are you really? You know, I've been blessed in my 51 years of ministries. Last week it was 51, by the way. Uh, I've been in good churches. I've not been in a bunch of churches that fuss and fight and carry on. And, and people that, you know, want to have a power struggle and let everybody know they're... They're, they're members of the church because their grandparents are members of the church and great-grandparents are members of the church. And, and uh, they, they, as a result of that, they think they got more to say than anybody else does. And um, I always preached to my teenagers that you're just as important as the oldest member of this church. Y'all agree with that? Huh? Yes. That's right. But 
That's not how we operate. David, I mean, uh, Haggai says, take a fresh start. And it requires for you to do something. What's that? Look where you are. Understand that it's very likely you are trying to do God's work unclean. Unclean. Now, he's not talking about washing your hands. We did that when we had the COVID. Remember on all the bathroom windows you went into, the mirror had a big, big window that said, wash your hands. I always ask myself, who uses the bathroom and didn't wash their hands before COVID-19? They should have had a sign-up sheet. I just use the toilet and I'm not washing my hands. The truth is, is that Haggai is saying something. He said, uh, the, it's important that you understand that we're talking about the flesh. We're talking about the the. the the pottery. We're talking about all the good things that God has allowed you to have to do your building of the temple, but there's one thing you don't have, and that's you need to understand about being unclean. I'm glad tonight that we got the opportunity to look at this because it's going to teach us something, so hang in there. Haggai said, I want to ask you something. I want to give you an illustration. And when I give you this illustration, it's a picture of what's going on right now in your lives. I want you to look where you are right now, and I want you to see it this way. You see, there's a culture out there that's got a background that says that you can excuse unholiness. Let me say this to you folks. We've lost the desire to be holy. We want to justify our sin. We want to make it sound like everybody's doing it. We want to make it sound like everybody's uh, being participated. It's okay because everybody, no, no, my dear friend, let me tell you. Sin is so absolutely wicked that we don't have any trouble identifying it. God lets you and I know that is sin. That is wrong. We are the ones who have to deal with it. You see, Haggai was referring back with what he had to deal with in studying for this sermon. What was that? He had to study the book of Leviticus. Leviticus said that the temple and all about the temple was all to be understood to be holy. So every day you come to work, you need to prepare yourself and get yourself ready to work on a brand new temple, and that's your fresh start. Now, why is that so important? This is the temple we're talking about. It could easily be con contaminated. If you don't mind, sin is so contagious, it makes make COVID-19 look like a, a bad cold. That's the way sin is. And when you think you ain't got anything to worry about, that's exactly when you catch sin. And sin robs you of your joy. Sin robbed you of your relationship with Almighty God. And as a result of that, when you think about taking a fresh start, you've got to understand, why do I need a fresh start? Glad you asked. Because you took a good look at what you are. Where you are. You realize, hey, I've got to work on the temple today. I've got to go in and get myself ready. Let me see, I gotta go get my tool belt. Gotta go get my hammer, my saw, my nails. If you're a mason, you gotta pick up your trowel and your level and your string. Every good bricklayer's got a string, amen. But wait a second. How y'all going to work this morning? Oh, the temple's right here at us. We we just walk to work. Okay, what are you doing when you get there? Go to work. We quit 16 years. We're trying to make up lost time here. How are you preparing to work? Uh, well, we're, we're letting the, the, the foreman tell us exactly what he wants done. We're, we're doing it following his instructions, and his instructions come from God. So I guess you might say we've got the ideal architect. That's true. 
But how do you know you're not contaminating your workspace? Hmm? Can I suggest something to you? Do you ever think about your bad attitude? Yeah. How many of you, don't raise your hand. How many of you ever come to church Sunday morning with a bad attitude? Somebody in church ticked you off and you drove in the parking lot and the first person you saw was them getting out of the car, getting ready to go in church. And you said, oh, no, I don't believe it. Jeez. You almost want to crank your car and go to another church, right? And then I pull up and go, hey, good to see you. And you say, I better go to the church and you'll worry me to death. You ever think about before you got out of your car what you needed to do with your family? Randy would like this. You know how people in the Old Testament came to church? They came singing. And it wasn't gloom, despair, agony on high knee. Deep, dark depression, excessive misery. It wasn't that. They sang victory in Jesus and hallelujah, praise the Lord. Oh, I'm getting ready to warm up right now. You see, the bottom line is when I look at where I am, where I am right now, I need to be cleansed. Let me tell you something. In the Old Testament, before the priest were to come to do anything at all in the tabernacle or the temple, do you know what he had to do first? He had to go to the brazen laver, and it was full of water, and he had to wash himself from the top of his bald head to the bottom of his bald feet. And it wasn't ceremonial cleaning either. It was cleansing. It was getting rid of the sin, repenting of the sin. I don't want to do this anymore. I don't want to ever commit that sin again. That's what went on. Why? He's about to do God's work. He's about to take people who sinned in their lives and, and get them to sacrifice a lamb for over their sin and ask God to forgive them and wash them white as snow. My dear friend, that's the way we come to church. Then when the song leader gets up, Randy gets up here, gets a guitar around his neck and tells, okay, folks, we're going to sing this song. You know what? You sing it like you mean it. You don't stand there and go, well, I ain't going to sing like she does. I ain't going to sing like he does. I can tell you right now. No, you've been blessing God, and you've seen where you are. If you touch someone, let me ask you something. Follow me very carefully. Don't lose this. This is very important. If you are, are unclean, got some grease on your hand, Maybe got some dirt in your boots or shoes or sandals or flip-flops. I ain't going to go any further than that, okay? That's what you got. Does that mean that if I am muddy and dirty and nasty and I reach over and grab Dave's hand and I grab hold of his hand, he grabs hold of my hand, does that mean that I cleanse him? Huh? Uh-uh. No, you know what happens? That dirty rascal will transfer every dirty sin he's got, and guess where it's going to go? That's right. We do not become holy by touching holy. We become holy by being holy. That's what the Word of God teaches. I'm to be honest about it. I used to teach my boys when they were growing up. I used to teach them that if you do right and know you're doing right, you'll never be ashamed to explain what you did. You do wrong, and you know what you'll do? You'll lie with everybody else who's with you because it's important. My dad used to tell me all the time, he'd say, if you go laying down with dogs, you'll get up with fleas. And every now and then a nasty old tick will get in there. I never paid much attention to that old saying until I got to be a teenager and I realized, you know what, he's right. The teenagers in my high school, most of them didn't go to church. And instead of me doing things to them, it was the other way around. They would invite me to participate in their sin. 
Thank God I had a holy father and a dedicated grandmother that made sure that that stopped nipped in the bud, as Barney Fife used to say. Be sure y'all go to work tomorrow and tell everybody you know. Pastor quoted Barney Fife again on Sunday Wednesday night Bible study. Haggai says, you guys, do you understand what you're doing today? You're working on the temple. You're working on where we all are going to come and we're going to worship God and we're going to be involved with that and you're working on that today? Then don't you think you better get a fresh start and figure out where you are spiritually? Or are you just going to go through it Hope and pray to be all right. We were building Kings Highway Baptist Church. We had a couple of hillbillies, rednecks, that were carpenters. We were talking about your job back there being an electrician. He, by the way, he's a jack of all trades. He need, we got things get fixed around here. Get him and Smokey working on together. I just volunteered them. But anyways... We had this one guy, and he, he, he was kind of a loudmouth guy, and he always had to say something derogatory about church. Well, <clears throat> one day, um, I was up there with the contractor showing him about how the baptistry were, was to fit. Baptistry was on the fourth floor of King's Highway Baptist Church. So when you go by that church, you see the fourth floor? That's the baptistry up there. And... Uh, we used to ask people when they got them in the baptistry, you want to go over or you want to go under? They always said go under. But um, he was up there and he was telling uh, some dirty joke or something to others, one of the workers. And I just kind of ignored him in a few minutes. He said, preacher, when are you going to fill your baptistry? I said, when we finish the building, we'll fill the baptistry. I said, uh, why don't you find out if you need to be the first one to be baptized? And he said, I tell you what you do, preacher. He said, here's what you do. You fill that baptism with Budweiser and I'll drink a dry. And I looked to him and I said, you know what? You can make fun of the front door. You can make fun of the nursery. You can make fun of the bathroom." You can go downstairs and make fun of the fellowship hall. But in my presence, don't you ever make fun of baptistry. You see, the Lord Jesus Christ was the one who said, follow me in baptism. And a Budweiser don't have any place in the heart of to start with, much less in my baptistry. And I told him, I said, brother, if you want to get in that baptistry, I'll tell you how the Bible says you can get there. It'll get you in the baptistry and it'll get you into heaven. But I said, with that kind of attitude, let me tell you, you ain't got to worry about it. You know that man left that job that afternoon and never came back? I'll never forget one of the men walked to me and said, Preacher, did you run somebody else off today? <laughs> See, I did. And I'm not going to miss him either. Let me say something about Haggai. He was a preacher. He stood and told people for 16 years, get back to work. Get back to work. Get back doing what God wants you to do. Get God back in your focus. And the Bible says that when they didn't do it, instead they took your getting nice clothes and getting a nice garden and getting themselves all ready and eating and having a big time, things didn't go well. So when they turned to the man of God and said, Haggai, tell us again what God wants us to do. And he said, God wants you to repent. Look at where you are right now. And because you're looking at where you are right now, it's time for you to take a step in the right direction. What is that? Paul the Apostle tells us what it is. He said, if you touch something unclean, he said, the truth is you need to understand that you will be unclean on the inside. And for that reason, you need to understand that there are three basic points here. The first one we've seen, look at where we are now. Number two, listen to what he said about that uncleanness. He said, it is required that you look where we once were. He said, look, don't look in the past of the good old glory days. That's what I ended last week on. Remember that? Uh, no, he said, hey, you've left that. You're not there anymore. What do we do? Well, I'm glad you asked. 
Haggai said, all now be careful and consider. He said, what you were before you started this project, before you started doing what God wants you to do. He said, you understand, consider from the very beginning what you have before you and say, listen, I know where I've been and I know where I am. I know number one, I know number two. And because of that, I want to understand that Philippians chapter 3 and verse 13 and 14, Paul the Apostle said, forgetting those things which are behind me, I'm pressing toward the mark of the high calling. Oh, I wished I had another hour just to teach on this lesson alone. It's time for you and I to look ahead, not backwards. I started praying every day for a revival. I couldn't help thinking about what it's like to come to church. Five nights in a row, four nights in a row, I forgot how many it is. I, 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 how thrilled it is to know we're going to hear preaching and good gospel singing. Let me tell you something. There's a lot of churches ten times bigger than this one that doesn't have the music we have. You showing off? Yeah. I am. I thank God. I thank God that we've got that kind of stuff to look forward to. We don't look at our revival and go, yeah, we've got another one coming up four straight nights of boredom city. No. It ain't boredom around here. As a matter of fact, when I invite the preacher, I let him know this ain't a quiet place. Man, we've got people up here that sing and praise God and Shout hallelujah. Raleigh, you're not supposed to be sitting on that side. You're supposed to be sitting on this side. No wonder I'm fouled up. I got, you get me throwing off your amens. I thought it was Randy over there. Amen. I saw Randy got to wake up now because you're sitting over there. I want you to know something. Paul the Apostle said, I want you to know I press toward the high calling. I do. The nation of Israel needed to hear that. Why? Because they needed to know that God was still on the throne and that God was dealing with them and God was saying, I want you to build my temple. What both Haggai and Paul the Apostle were saying to people was very simple. Don't look backwards. Look forward. Which what? What does that mean? That means I have got to understand that Almighty God's got His hand on me, and if I follow His leadership, glory to God, I know I'm going to end up on the winning side. Haggai, I said, I want you to understand something. I want you to understand that in the New Testament, Ephesians correlate with Haggai, and Ephesians and, and, and Haggai say, what? He said, by grace are you saved through faith. Not of yourselves, it is a gift of God. Ready? Not of works. You didn't do a doggone thing to get saved. Nothing. As a result of that, he made it real clear we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus. As a result of that, my dear friend, I know where we have been. I know where we are, but wait a minute, we've got a third point. What's that? Take a fresh look at where we're going. Now, this is really exciting to me. Where is our church going, huh? Well, let's say, I guess we've just got to figure we just do the best we can, bless God, and give it everything we got, bless God. Why don't you reverse that, bless God, and then let him tell you what he's going to do with you. What are you doing? Huh? Where are you going? The truth of the matter is, is that everyone in this church, everybody part of this church family, has got a knowledge of where God is leading so what do you do? Here's what you do. You get on board. You say, hey, I know what Randy's goal is with the music. Randy, I'm praying for you and praying with you. Do you mind if I do that? No. You sure? You sure? There you go. He's asking for it. He's asking for you all to pray for him. Alan, what are you going to do? Huh? Same thing. You want him praying for you? Huh? June, you want them praying for you? Everybody pray for me. Huh? Everybody pray for me. 
Everybody pray for you. You don't want anybody to miss out on that. Amen. I saw today on television, uh, this is a little off the subject, but the, the high school football coach got fired because he prayed. And Newt Gingrich had a pretty good statement. He said, he says, I thought we believed in the First Amendment, freedom of speech. That man can talk to whoever he wants to. <laughs> Haggai says, you know what you got to do? You got to understand, if we're going to be looking for a fresh start, we got to look in the right place. Where is that? God's plan. We got to see what it is that God wants us to do and what God has for us to do. We got to see that it's not in just overcoming uh, low batteries. No, it's not just uh, coming to a place where we enjoy each other's company. No, 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 no. It's not a social club. It's not about just staying where we are. Nope, nope. God wants us to move on. It's not about us having to stop and think about where we're doing, what we're going. No, nope, we made it up mind years ago and we're just following God's plan. You've been without work for 16 years. What are you going to do? Go to work. Not going to quit. I'm going to go. This is where I was, this is where I am, and that's where I'm headed. Amen. Glory to God. And as a result of that, what happens? The Bible says, according to Haggai, God is going to open up the windows of blessing on you. That means God's going to take care of you getting stuff done, accomplishing. Driving all the way from Fredericksburg out here almost every week, we're not sitting in the car, riding along 17, just talking about sports and car racing and all kinds of stuff. No, Dylan and I are in the car coming from Fredericksburg. We're talking about vacation Bible school. We're talking about how to decorate the church building in regard to some of the themes we've got. We're talking about doing this and doing that and doing this and this. And we're wound up. I am at least. I don't know about him. I'm wound up tight on the banjo stream when we start talking about what's going to happen, what we're going to do, how this is going to work, how this is not going to work. And we're looking down the road quite a way saying, what about this, what about this, what about this? What I'm trying to tell you is this. Paul the Apostle said, forgetting those things behind me, I got my eyes and I'm pressing toward the mark of the calling of the high, of the high Christ, Christ Jesus. I am looking ahead not behind. I want to see God do something. And it starts in my heart. It doesn't start me saying, well, if the deacons don't, then I'm going to not have to. No, God's call on my life had nothing to do with the deacons of Jefferson Baptist Church. It had to do with me and God. It's important that you and I realize not only where we were. Let me tell you something. I've been a part of some pretty exciting churches. And I can look back and say, boy, that was exciting. But that doesn't motivate me like saying, look what has happened here in just a few short years I've been here, three years I've been here, and what God has done, and glory to God, I'm ready to, keep, I'm ready to just get with it. And here's what we got to understand. Paul the Apostle reflected what Haggai said to the point where Haggai started saying, you know what, we need to take a good look at what God's doing and say, look, I want to be a part of this. I want to close with something very carefully. Dr. Jerry Prevo, my pastor in Alaska, went to Alaska in 1971 to candidate to be the pastor of uh, Anchorage Baptist Temple. The time is running about 500. And uh, that night, he took the late night plane out of Anchorage, which goes from Anchorage to Seattle. So you, you get to Seattle early in the morning so you can get connecting flights real easily. So the flight that he was on is called the Midnight Hour, or some people call it um, uh, Red Eye Special, something like that. But anyways, make a long story short. He... Uh, He'd been asked before he left. The chairman of Dickens had met with him and said, you know, we want to call you as our pastor. So he said, will you give us the answer? We'll vote, vote on you the very next Sunday. And he said, let me pray about it. And as that big DC-10 back then took off from Anchorage Airport, it turned like this to go down the Kenai Peninsula over into the, on the way east home. Okay, now follow me here carefully. When that plane cranked, 
he could look out of his window and saw the entire city of Anchorage. And when that plane straightened up, preacher said he bowed his head at that, in that airplane and he said, God, you're going to do something in Anchorage, Alaska. Will you let me be a part of it? I'll do it. I'll do it. I can't begin to tell you how many times I've thought about that right here. God, you're going to do something here. Let me be a part of it. Let me be a part of it. Glory to God. I'll give it everything I got. I won't let up. I won't quit. I won't. I promise you, I won't rust out, quit. I'll get, I give it all I got. Now, why? It's a fresh start. I had a preacher friend of mine insult me yesterday morning. I told him he did. I said, you dirty rascal, you discourage me. He said, you, you want a church at your age? I said, well, look, before you take that uh, walking cane away from me, you better get it away because I'm better to knock you in the head with it. You know? I, 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 age is nothing to do with it. That's what's got to do with it right here. Fresh, new start. Let's pray. Lord, thank you. Thank you so much for tonight. Thank you for the privilege to be able to preach like this and teach like this. Let's talk about you and what you have plans here and how you plan to lead and guide and direct. And Lord, I don't take that lightly. I do not take it lightly. And I pray tonight. Thank you for the music. Thank you for the prayer time. Now we look forward to Sunday. Father's Day. We're going to have a great time, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. All of God's people said? Amen. Did you learn anything tonight? Yes, Did you really? All right. That means you'll be back next week. <laughs>